I'm having a contest and anybody can win. We're gonna help you find a deal, fund a deal, and then we're gonna flip the deal and we're gonna split the profits 50-50. Joel! What's up, Trey? How you nice doing? Nice to meet you. The house looks solid. So next plan is look at the comps. We're driving the comps right now. You just bought this house? I did in April. How do you like it? I really like it. So I can tell you my go-tos have been stuff like this, but not in this type of a house. Like this, I've been using this a lot lately for actually my rentals. This is a, probably a good safe choice right here. It's your call, bro. I uh, like the black. All right, that's what we're going with. Double, huh? We're we done. We're done when I come in back. Maybe you don't see me again. So <laughs> it's supposed to be 100% done today. I guarantee that's not the case. We actually ended up trying to get extorted by the guy for like $10,000 more. We just said enough's enough and we moved on. And look at our house. Oh, man. Hey, what's up, Jonathan? So Jonathan's been the guy we found off, was it Craigslist? Craigslist. Yeah. Craigslist. Man, this switch. door looks good. Remember he wanted to rip out this door too? Yes. Thanks to him, he made it look nice. Yeah, no, the house looks... Looks really good now. I mean, I know it's been painful, but I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's not a freight train anymore, right? Yeah. Oh, now you f***ed up. Now you f***ed up. You have f***ed up now. Now you f***ed up. So guys, yeah, I just kind of want to wrap stuff up. So we closed the two properties in Houston that Joelle and me identified, that Jonathan saved our asses on. You know, want to talk about how maybe that experience affected you guys. Uh, I'm going to give you the floor right now, uh, Joelle, and kind of recap, you know, what happened with the money that you got. So originally we had planned to make a lot more money, but unforeseen circumstances drastically dropped the profit for the both of us close to twelve thousand dollars i was able to use that money to pay back some debt that i had accrued and with that the year before from being out of work you know i was always looking at the brighter side i was like hey it released some stress by paying off a, a lot of debt that i had in other words i learned a lot and i'm looking forward to the next one so if you were to talk to somebody who's never flipped a house what would your words of wisdom be to that person do your due diligence on the contractor be on top of the contractor don't pay the contractor up front make sure the work is done i like that and you're gonna learn no matter if it costs you money time or energy that was a super hard process we took a fantastic deal turned it into a bad deal and then we had a, an amazing guy come into our lives you know i think it's all about synergy and relationships in life you know and like you took a chance on this contest that contest hopefully will fuel you to take more chances on yourself I, you know how to identify deals i think that that is something that you figured out very quickly it's probably your electrical engineering type of mind that really understands that well you and jonathan stick to working together there's a lot of money to be made for both y'all out there in houston um, i think we found a fantastic realtor cynthia i mean i really feel like everything just came together at the end we just had one bad apple and as you know when that happened this was going to be a cosmetic fix wrapper we ended up turning it into a full gut renovation that's one of those things that just you know you learn as you do and i think what happened there in that situation was the contractor had your ear for whatever reason sometimes that happens with people and you start believing the guy that is out to get you versus the guy who's here trying to help you right and that's a little bit in the beginning like you're like is Trevor well, so really talking I, I will say this sorry i didn't mean to cut you off sure but, go ahead I'm, let, me uh, pin, let me pin you one thing thing is uh finding a contractor who's aware of what you're trying to do because you know me i'm typically used to working for homeowners so working for a homeowner the expectations and what they want is completely different from what you want you know when i was started working with you i kind of got to peek into your mind and understand why you chose to make these choices because as a regular contractor like the, the other contractor i'm sure in his head he was like oh these cabinets are old let me just give them new cabinets more work for me you know he's thinking from like a homeowner's perspective he's not really thinking what's in your best interest which is like on the second project that's kind of where me and you kind of figured out i had ideas and i was like let's not even do that because that's not going to fit into Troy's budget. He's thinking about it a certain way now. Y you have to make sure for sure that the co you and the contract are on the same page. Right. And I think that like once you figure that out, like how smooth was that job? A lot smoother because, you know, uh, the attention to detail is always there, but, you know, you don't spend so much time on it versus, you know, as if it were your home. What things did you learn throughout this process? Because you got excited about real estate investing. Like, I don't know if I told you this, Joel, but he hit me up. I'm like, is he serious about this? And he's like, yeah, I'm serious about it. And what got you inspired? Everybody knows people make money in real estate. As soon as I realized that I got to get an inside scoop of why you're doing it, how you're doing it, and when to do it, I definitely wanted in on that. So I definitely tried to 
listen to everything you were saying. Listen, why you wanted, for instance, at the Marietta house, the electric stove and electric microwave combo versus replacing it with a gas stove and keeping everything the same, we chose to put in electric stuff while giving them new appliances and it's only spending half the cost. So like, to me, that's something, if I were doing it myself, I would have just thought about, oh, well, I'm not trying to move around the gas lines. Let's replace it with what was there and just make it look good. And I would have spent an extra thousand dollars versus $2,000, exactly, versus the microwave oven combo, which looks a lot nicer. It's updated. I mean, you know, that's what people want. I did like the hidden pantry you made. Although that was the other thing too, um, in the flips i feel like there's a lot of opportunity like as long as you get creative with it to not go over the budget you know yeah especially if you're a skilled guy like a, like we learned on the first one joel like the hardest part is finding the skilled person we found a great person i think we got a good team here of people i'm happy to find deals and we can continue this relationship like i told you as long as we got jonathan at the helm and cynthia uh as our agent we interviewed a couple different agents you followed up you wanted the business you were willing to make sacrifices you're willing to prove yourself and you were a social media star you worked your ass off I'm gonna tell you one thing about Cynthia that I really really like we got a bid to go clean out Marietta this is I got mad respect for you for this by the way because this is how I am the bid came in what did the bid come in at Cynthia you... it was originally they came at 350 I believe for the cleaning and I said to you I go I'll pay him 250 and you go I'll do it <laughs> <laughs> she goes, oh, I'll, I'll do, do it. it. And, and I was like, well, hell yeah. She goes, no, she actually said this. She goes, do you mind if I do it? Are you okay if I do it for 250? And I said, a hundred percent. She's like, I'll do whatever it takes. I'm willing to do it. And you did the whole thing and you sold both those houses. Any takeaways on this from you, Cynthia? I learned a lot through the process. Should people use you to list their house in Houston, Texas? Oh, for sure. That's a no brainer. I, I, they should. I, I mean, you told me go sell that house and I was like okay I said let's do the we, we agreed on the open house I said okay you said get a soda two days later we had it under contract basically under contract we had that offer in um after that I hosted that open house because I was very talkative to the agents and to the clients it's different if you're the listing agent because you kind of know a little bit more than, of the house than like having a colleague come and do an open house it's just different um, you know more right. about the house, so you could kind of tell the buyer more. You showcase about the, house. the houses is what you yes. did. You, show, you yes. showcase them. You put them on a pedestal. You said, "Look at this beautiful work that Jonathan did. Work that Joelle did. All these lights are on like four gang switches and all that <laughs> stuff. The electrical top notch. The freaking finishes are top notch. And you sold them both for us very quickly. I didn't think that first deal was going to go through, and you got it done. I want to ask you guys each a question so if you were to tell somebody who's flipping i know you learned a lot about flipping and stuff like this cynthia if you were to tell anybody who's thinking about flipping any advice what advice would that be just take the risk if i mean if you have money to put down on a house and do it hard lenders i mean they give you money for the construction part too it's going to be a little bit more but i mean i would just say do it. If you don't push yourself to go do it, then when are you going to do it? So, and then Never. you learn as you go. So, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're going to fail the first try or maybe not, maybe not. Maybe you'll do so good, but I would say do it and I'm going to do it. Good job. Good job. All right. Well, that's awesome. How does anybody get a hold of you if they want to list their house in Houston? They can give me a call at my phone number. It's 832-885-4445. Or you can follow me on Instagram at Cynthia Vela underscore Texas realtor. Thank you, Cynthia. Okay. All right, Joel, what are you going to do next? I know you've been working that graveyard shift. Oh, yeah, I got, I got bags under my eyes. My takeaway is I'm going to keep on grinding. Uh, I'm going to keep looking for houses to uh, buy. The wholesalers are sending me lists, so I'm, uh, I'm doing the numbers, but none of them seem you know profitable and so i'm still driving around when i can to look for houses and um, try to contact the owners i'm having hard time finding the owner to one house because i can't find the contact information for that house and but that house does need a lot of work in that neighborhood they're selling for the high 300s i think i'm gonna try to offer at least 60 or 70 thousand for that house it's vacant i'm assuming it's been vacant for four years oh wow there's a hole in the roof and it's a four bedroom, two bath. It's spacious, but it does need a lot of work. Just track down the owner, find out where they, do they live in Texas? No. no. Where they live? I think it was California. I'm trying to find it. I, I went, the taxes are paid though. Check to make sure it didn't get sold at tax sale and that tax sale purchaser is selling it. Check the chain of title. Try to find the owner on Facebook. Okay. Or Google the word phone number and stuff like that. Do you have any parting words of wisdom for anybody who's trying to get started in flipping or real estate? Yes, go 
go ahead and purchase uh short kern's uh program, <laughs> his book hey i like that man amen amen i appreciate that yeah no we've got like i think uh like 13 or 14 students i told you this the other day you're the reason that we named our course the millionaire mentorship my dad came up with this program and now it spawned this whole thing so i'm thankful for you joel for putting a chance on me i'm glad it worked out to houston i'm glad everything happened for a reason have a great weekend and we'll talk to you in the next one all right troy you have a great weekend also all right jonathan any parting words for those youngsters i know you're a youngster but the biggest boon that i've had is being able to be around you guys and even cynthia you know just learning the terminology knowing how the process works you know because that's all foreign to me especially for us youngsters you know i don't we don't understand none of that or why it's going on or who to talk to or how to get financed and all that stuff and your book really did a really good job and i like that i could get it done pretty quick and, oh did you uh, read it yeah yeah, I'm done with it. I didn't see your review on Amazon. <laughs> but no, from a contractor perspective, um, I would say I overthought a lot of things. And every time I got you on the phone, you were just kind of like, we just need to do this. Focus on the bathrooms, focus on the kitchen, make it look nice. Don't worry about it. Move on to the next one. That's probably the best way to go. You know, don't go in there trying to tear down everything you see. Just make it look nice. Yeah, contractors think of like, man, I got to make this perfect. I got to build this re back. If you're thinking like a flipper, you're like, okay, what's ugly and do I need to change? Change exactly, everything. exactly. And that's where the mindset, I, I begin to kind of change the way I, I see things, you know, as far as like how long it's going to take, you know, how much money it's going to take. And if doing that is even worth the money, you know, like there was a couple of changes that I brought up to you that, you know, I said would look really badass. And you're like, yeah, that's not going to change the price. Well, it would, have, it would look badass, but like I told you, like you go 45, I think it was 4,500 you told me. And you're like, I can yeah, make yeah. this awesome thing. That, and I was like, well, how yeah. much is it going to cost? Electric built-in fireplace, you know, all that <laughs> stuff. And it's like, yeah, it wouldn't be necessary. And because you spent all the time making those bathrooms and the kitchen look badass, the house sold for over list and we didn't have to build an electrical fireplace that has no right. utilitarian, but it looks cool. And we got out right before the market's about ready to crash. So I'm happy about that. So right on guys, have a great weekend. I appreciate everybody here, especially you, Joel, man. You got a special place in my heart, man. I spent a lot of time with you on this project. Had to get tough with you a few times. Don't take it personal, you know what I mean? That's just the way I am, you know, when I gotta get that point through, you know? It has to be done sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate all you guys. Thanks a lot, man. All right, okay. go Strohs. <laughs> all right, man. See you later. <laughs>